do it. See, yeah, we tried to record it, but it didn't work, and that thing always works. So that's just the enemy. I'm on to something, huh? Video, <laughs> yeah. That. All right, don't worry about that for right now. I'm recording. Okay, I can see myself, so I won't be able to do it this way. I'll just do it this way, like I'm speaking into a mic. So, um, but what I, I guess we start over with what I was saying. What we talked about with what we're talking about ties into my study on Lucifer's fall because in my study with Lucifer's fall, is that Lucifer had a throne. Remember, we read that he had a throne because he said, I'll exalt my throne, it's dirty. He had it in the dirty clothes. Well, it's not dirty. Okay, so Lucifer had a throne because he said, I'll exalt my throne. So he's he's got a man. <sighs> the devil from the beginning of time has wanted to raise up a man and put him in his throne and uh, bring a new one world order and exalt his throne through the man because the man is carrying the dominion okay he's always tried to do that okay um so um remember the angelic the angelic um the earthly prince of tyra got really corrupt and he was possessed by the spirit of satan himself and the devil tried to give him his throne okay of course the bible prophesies that god will give the devil what he wants for three and a half years okay because the antichrist has signed a peace pact for seven years with the nations but it only it fails after three years jesus christ returns after the somewhere in the tribulation and defeats the antichrist okay so my point is is that um the devil's always he tried with adolf hitler you see what i'm saying he tried to give that and god kept intervening and saying no god kept humbling kings every time a priest um uh, in the time of Daniel, the king never, I forget the king's name, what was his name? He, he he tried to, he said he was like God or whatever. And God told him that if you try to, if you, you know, take my credit, my glory, for, you know, if you take credit. I can't remember right now. Um, but my point is, is that uh, God had made him, he was the head of gold. God had made him wealthy, made him good. And if he ever took the credit for that and say, you know, if he ever got pride for God, would strip it from him, and he would be like the cows eating grass in the field, remember? Until he humbled himself, then God would give it all back. So, why is that important? Because God, God said, the Bible says God sets up kings and he brings them down. But there's coming a day when the Antichrist comes, God will allow him to come forward. Come forward as as sending as God sending the Antichrist as a strong delusion that they may believe the lie because they reject their son Jesus Christ or they rejected the father's son Jesus Christ you see what I'm saying so because and of course that can't happen until there's a great falling away so a lot of people have either been in the faith fell away because the Bible says that the coming of the day the coming of the Lord will not be the gathering of the the gathering together of the saints the um the coming of the Lord will not come until there's a falling away first and then the man of sin be revealed according to scriptures. So we see that God will, throughout all time in history, the devil has tried to find him a man. We see that with Adolf Hitler. Okay, God eventually brought him down. Okay, he was burned up. I don't want to get into the whole story with Adolf Hitler. But my point is the devil's always been looking for, the devil himself has always been looking for a man to establish his throne so that Satan can come in full authority and do what he wants to do. He needs a man to do it. You see what I'm saying? So, of course, God's going to give the devil what he wants eventually. What am I saying? If you look at the story of Ahab and Jezebel, Ahab couldn't fully accomplish what he wanted to accomplish as a ruler. Jezebel had to come in and get it for him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and anytime you have a woman that's at the head of something, it's, it's a perverted spirit. Now, I'm not saying a woman can't be the head of something as long as she's under the right. You know what I'm saying? A woman can be a pastor as long as she's got a 
a male pastor or, or she's got some kind of apostolic leadership or covering or somebody, people, and, 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 and that's biblically accurate because even Solomon said in the, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Some of our greatest, most powerful kings got in so much trouble because they went and did things behind the Lord's back without consulting with Jehovah by his prophets and elders. You see what I'm saying? So when you... Um, so if the men can get in trouble easily, you see what I'm saying? God made it, if you look at the scripture where it talks about man, I'm sorry, the father is the head of Jesus and Jesus is the head of the man and the man is the head of the woman for the man is Christ. If you look at that, yeah, that principle is the same with husband and wife, but if you read that passage of scripture, it was talking about in generally when it comes to men and women in the body of Christ or in the kingdom of God. Because in the beginning of that, Paul was talking about follow me as I follow Christ. Do you see what I'm saying? Like a, a husband to the church, so to speak. You see what I mean? So, um, or, or, or Christ like to the church or, or see and why? Because it's very important to understand and to have the fullness of Christ. It's a fivefold ministry. The Bible said the fivefold ministry brings to brings the fullness of this brings the saints into the fullness of Christ into a full statue into the full knowledge of the son of God in Ephesians four. That's anointing glory and power. That means they have something greater from the father, from Jesus that can build you up and birth you in a greater dimension of power and authority than what you're walking in. Are you seeing what I'm saying? That means they're more anointed. They're more, there's more power and glory. There's more of Jesus with them. The church starts out as a 12-year-old Jesus with a five-fold ministry. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, because we don't have any real, we don't have any uh, powerful generals of the faith anymore who walk in the power and signs and wonders anymore like we used to. But my point is they're still there. But my point is that... um. To have authority, you have to be under authority. Correct? I'm going somewhere with this. Or the Bible wouldn't have said that if you submit to the elders, God gives grace to the humble. You see? That when you when you come under the right authority, the right mantle of Christ, Christ is really on your life. You're really under Christ, his fullness. You can't be under Christ and be alone. You just it just God didn't make it that way. Okay? That's why the Bible says, Know them who labor among you, for they watch over your soul. But anyways, my point is this. There's power and authority when you have the right people established by God. Correct? All right? Now I'm going somewhere with this. If there's power and authority, what happens is, now remember when King Saul came in office. King Saul was a people's choice. So God said, you know what, I'll give the people what they want. So that when King Saul fails, the people will see it. And then I'll go ahead. And that's when he told David, all right, David. I'm sorry. That's when he told Samuel, Judge Samuel. All right, go to the house of Jesse and I'll show you a man there after my own heart. In other words, this is the guy I really wanted from the get-go. Because King Saul was anointed for the job, but he didn't operate under that kingly anointing. He didn't operate under the headship authority that was over. You see, you see, he wasn't operating under Christ or the Lord or, or the Father. You see what I'm saying? So God sends Eli God sends Elijah, Elijah. God sends Eli. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Samuel, to a man after God's own heart who will submit up under a, a prophetic authority or the you know who will listen to the voice of God and do the right things. Okay, so where am I going with this? I don't want to lose this because I really feel this in my spirit. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Okay, what I'm trying to show you is that um, is that um. Is that when you don't have the right when you're not when you're not under the right authority in the kingdom of God and you're trying to get wealth and prosperity, you have to go about an Ahab and a a Jezebel way of doing things. But then again, the Jezebel spirit or the Ahab spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. It's still the working of Satan trying to find his man. Okay, but God always raised up a prophet or somebody to expose it or to curse it and to bring it down. Okay, God chose Elijah to expose the false prophets of Baal and to expose Baal worship. And he did it when he called fire down from heaven, exposed that their God was false and his God was real. As a result, to turn Israel back to Jehovah. But because he didn't finish the job, Baal worship was restored. Are you seeing what I'm saying? God always, when things get too big, oh Jesus, when things things get too out of hand dangerous people god will raise up somebody in the land oh jesus 
and said, now go to the house of Jesse, a man after my own heart. What am I trying to tell you? Are you seeing what I'm saying? I believe the new one world order is coming, and I believe America is not going to be in it. But it's going to happen with the elite and the globalists, with or without America. Or America will be split in half down the middle. Okay? It'll be at war with itself, in a nutshell. Alright? Because throughout my whole Christian life, Bible prophets and prophecy preachers always talked about war breaking out in streets and terrorists and all that stuff happening. And you know what? We're seeing those signs like never before. Okay? <sighs> What I'm trying to tell you, the Bible said, when Simon Peter said, why don't we take the, why don't we separate the wheat from the tares? And Jesus said, I'll, in the end, I'll do the separating the wheat and the tares. There's a gathering together of the, of the elect, the fullness of Gentiles is coming. And God's going to use the persecution of the Antichrist to do it. But he's going to need men like, you know, maybe Donald Trump. I don't know. He's, I, maybe he's going to give his life to the Lord. It's, there's claims out there saying that he already has. Huh? But, you know, a lot of people claim to be, you know, you know what I'm saying? The bottom line is without good leadership, people fall into sin and people fall into error and things happen. Bad things happen. Okay. Uh, if you look at the book of Jude, the book of Jude, the book of Judges. When Joshua died off, the people knew not the ways of their, of their, of their forefathers, knew not the ways of the Lord. And uh, God had to raise up judges in the land to bring order. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So, and that's what we're seeing here. And that's what I believe what's happening. Okay. With this, with this Ahab spirit and this Jezebel spirit, Ahab couldn't get all the land. He couldn't get the stuff that he wanted. Of course, uh, he had to, he had to get a Jezebel to do it for him. Oh, Jesus. See, I want to talk about, you know, the presidency. I want to talk about it, but Obama's not trying to get a third term. Everything in his speeches that he's talking about, he even said out of his own mouth that there's already a one world global currency. He said it in a sinister way like, oh, it's, it's already happening. The people in the White House, they, he already plans to set up their headquarters in Israel. If they're going to have a one world order, a one world government... They're not folk. Their main focus isn't America, but they would love to have America involved in it. How much more power and how much greatness would they have on their side if they had America on it? Are you see what I'm saying? I've been praying in the Holy Ghost. I've been praying a lot, and I've been looking at prophecy of scriptures. But right now, what I'm seeing, and the uh, those that are running, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a Jezebel trying to give Ahab what he wants. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to say any more. I don't want to say too much more. Those of you that are walking with the Lord and have a king sense of discernment when it comes to the real truth, who can see past the delusion that's running out there will have a clue what I'm talking about. But this is just a small little piece of um, what I'm, how I want to get into this. You know, I'm kind of speaking in parables right now, watching some